It won't be an exaggeration to call life in the 21st century amazing. We're used to smartphones, which help us get connection in any part of the world, and to artificial intelligence suggestions prompting us what to check out on websites. Most of us would have trouble trying to picture what the world might look like even tomorrow, and it seems completely pointless to make any predictions about opportunities that nearest decades have in store for us. Imagine you have ventured to go to sleep in an ice chamber and awake a hundred years from now. What is your perception of the revealed reality? Are there any humans on the Earth? Or would everyone have moved to Mars for good by that time? Due to its comparative closeness to our planet and similarities of its natural properties with those of the Earth, Mars is the most likely candidate to become a human colony in the foreseeable future. Apart from Venus, which is potentially uninhabitable, traveling to the red planet from the Earth takes the least energy. And even though humans cannot survive on the planet's surface without protective gear, the conditions for settling there remain the most favorable in comparison to those on the other celestial objects closest to us. The main objective of colonizing Mars, which is planned for this century, is to build a permanent base for scientific research of the planet and its satellites. This base may later be used for further colonization of the asteroid belt and other more distant planets of the solar system. Besides, Mars may turn out to be rich enough in natural resources due to the fact that there is no free oxygen in its atmosphere. Rich deposits of native metals may be concealed in its depths, such as copper, iron, tungsten, rhenium, uranium, and gold. Currently, the main obstacle preventing the Mars colonization projects from taking off is how to manage to send at least one colonist crew on a fast and comparatively cheap journey. As for transporting the entire base with all necessary resources, equipment and machinery, it is at this point quite unimaginable. You would have heard that in 2016 the CEO of the American company SpaceX, Elon Musk, shared his plans for the exploration of the Red Planet and presented a project of an interplanetary transportation infrastructure intended for colonizing Mars as soon as this century. Its main components are a reusable booster rocket, an interplanetary spaceship for transporting human passengers and a spaceship refilling modification. The system's concept is based on several key technologies that will involve rocket reusability, special tankers for refilling the rocket in orbit, and the use of methane as fuel. Methane can be produced locally from water and carbon dioxide on Mars. All of the engines are supposed to be chemical. Iron thrusters and nuclear options I talked about in another video are at this point not being considered. The rocket Starship, carrying the future colonists, should have to be the largest ever rocket constructed by man. With its height reaching 118 meters, its diameter measuring 9 meters, and its launching mass accounting for 5,000 tons. Starship will consist of two parts, a spaceship and a booster rocket dubbed Super Heavy, which is needed to help the spaceship overcome the Earth's gravity. There will be a total of 43 rocket engines installed in both parts. The company is planning a payload bay with a capacity of up to 100 tons of payload to be launched in orbit. Starship will be able to land on practically any dense terrain in the solar system. Inside, there will be about 1,000 cubic meters of sealed areas to accommodate 40 cabins for the crew, as well as large common areas, storage space, a galley and a solar storm shelter. Elon Musk has already claimed Starship to be the most challenging project of SpaceX, with the company intending to concentrate all its resources on putting it into practice. The first step to the colonization of Mars, taken back in 2018, was the construction of a spaceport in Texas with a view to carrying out tests of boosters and new types of rockets. 
The choice of Texas was predefined by the fact that SpaceX will be able to ship bulky rocket components to the assembly site straight from Los Angeles. Besides, Texan authorities willingly provide financial support to the company as the spaceport offers a big number of vacancies in this state. However, the main reason for building the spaceport there is explained by the geographical position of Texas. It is located in the southern part of the USA, and as it is closer to the equator, it may greatly help save up fuel. The Earth's rotation will greatly boost the rocket's acceleration on liftoff. Tests of future interplanetary rockets began back in 2019. Since then, the first prototype has been successfully tested. The second prototype has passed the SEAL test. The third has been tested by liquid nitrogen pressurization and the construction of the lower part of the ship has been tested in the fourth prototype. The last test was carried out in early April 2020, with the fifth prototype tested in cryogenic temperatures and high pressure. At the moment, the company's intention is to carry on with the tests and to develop the rocket's new versions. After all tests have been completed by SpaceX, Elon Musk plans to move on to the next stage. At this stage, Starship will first have to orbit the Earth, depleting all of its fuel supply during the process. After that, the rocket will be refilled by space tankers. Once the refilling is completed, the spacecraft will set out on its journey to Mars. These launches are planned to take place twice a year, when the distance between Mars and the Earth is the shortest. Having said that, the summer of 2022 is the most favorable time for that, with the estimated flight time from several months to a year. Thus, landing on Mars may take place as soon as at the beginning of 2023. On the first flights to Mars, supplies and machinery necessary for future missions will be transported. Apart from that, the existence of water sources in the areas of key interest on the planet will need to be confirmed. A manned flight will herald the beginning of the third stage. A spacecraft with humans may optimistically arrive at the Red Planet as soon as in 2025. In order to build a Martian colony, the human settlers on Mars are going to need sources of food, machinery for water extraction and refinement, and systems for transforming local resources into fuel and oxygen, necessary for their return back to the Earth. The first humans on Mars will have to lay the groundwork for future Martian infrastructure. For instance, build a launch pad or a runway for safer landings of future manned missions. The first spacecraft are likely to serve as homes for the astronauts. According to Elon Musk, a permanent Martian base may be ready in 2028. The Martian living quarters are supposed to provide sufficient protection from radiation, prevent Martian sand from getting blown in, and sustain temperatures adequate for life. To date, there are several models of Martian living quarters which are being tested in the Gobi Desert, on the slopes of Hawaiian volcanoes, and in the Arizona Desert. The final stage of the colonization will involve the construction of the first Martian colony that would comprise fuel production facilities, greenhouses for growing food, and everything needed to support human life. After that, Elon Musk hopes to send about a million people to Mars. He emphasizes that the cost of one ticket must not be over $200,000. The head of SpaceX is certain that if all goes well, life on Mars shouldn't feel much different from that on our planet, and future colonists will enjoy the same kind of pizza places and bars as we have on our Earth. In theory, humans on Mars may not always have to live in a cold desert. SpaceX are currently working on a concept of a possible terraforming of the Red Planet in the distant future. In order to achieve that, it will take melting ice caps at the Martian poles. Being rich in carbon, they are likely to facilitate unleashing the hypothetical terraforming process. If it doesn't happen, the colonists will have to carry on their work in the atmospheric pressure of 1% of that of the Earth. 
they will constantly be harassed by powerful radiation which reaches the surface of Mars unthwarted as there is practically no atmosphere on Mars to speak of. These people will not be able to stay there without special machinery and protective spacesuits. Thus their efforts to build a self-sufficient colony will simply turn into a struggle to survive. In his recent speech, Elon Musk traditionally compared the colonization of Mars with populating America. He also added that unfortunately today there is no guarantee that the first colonists will be able to safely return to the Earth. Scientists will probably devise ways to adapt to hazards on Mars in the next several years. Or else it will be the colonists who will have to make this discovery and their contribution will be reliable groundwork for spreading life on an entire planet. Dear friends, such prospects can't but amaze. That's why I'm here to tell you about them. Every new episode on the Cosmo channel is the result of a lot of work and it takes time and effort and of course motivation encouraged by your likes. If you enjoy what we do, don't forget to hit the button under this video to subscribe. And then every one of us will get at least a tiny bit closer to the amazing world of our future.